My name is Suhail Alakaband. I'm an interventional cardiologist. And we're here in Belgrade on September 30th at the International Symposium, um, Risky Crossroad Diabetes Coronary Artery Disease in Heart Failure. And my talk this morning was percutaneous coronary intervention in diabetic patients. And what we talked about is that with diabetes, first of all, the patients are at higher risk of repeat events, mortality, stroke, um, no matter how we revascularize those patients compared to non-diabetics. So we have to pay special attention to the diabetic patients and after we revascularize the patients. As far as revascularization is concerned, we talked about the landmark trials, starting with the Barry trial that compared angioplasty to bypass surgery and showed that bypass surgery is superior to angioplasty. However, the non-randomized patients in the Barry registry, angioplasty did as well as with bypass surgery. Moving on uh, with times, then uh, after angioplasty came stents, and uh, we saw that stents and bypass surgery performed equally well in all comers, but in diabetic patients there has always been a concern that bypass surgery may be better than stents, and then came two trials in diabetic patients, a smaller trial called CARDIA, which did not show any difference in mortality and showed that with PCI, stroke was less. And finally came the larger trial, the FREEDOM trial of 1900 patients, which were randomized to surgery and PCI with first generation drug eluting stents, which was the Cypher stent and the Paclitaxel uh, eluting stents. And that showed that bypass surgery in diabetics with multivessel disease did better than PCI. The limitations of that trial were again, the stents used were first generation stents that have a much higher stent thrombosis rate and the stent thrombosis continues beyond the first year. And that added to the mortality as we saw in Freedom that 5% of events were related to stent thrombosis and 30% of those patients died. The other limitation in Freedom was there was excess of non-cardiac deaths in the PCI arm, which is unexplained. And finally, the pharmacotherapy, especially the antiplatelet agents used at the time of Freedom trial were mostly aspirin and clopidogrel, which we now know that more potent antiplatelet agents like ticagalor and prasugrel do much better in diabetic patients. So in the end, it looks like that if we use current generation stents, if we use more antiplatelet, um, potent antiplatelet agents, uh, and if we use the dual antiplatelet therapy longer than 12 months, that patients with current generation stents may fare equally well between bypass surgery and PCI. One caveat to keep in mind is that the burden of coronary artery disease as determined by the syntax score plays a much bigger role than patients being diabetic or non-diabetics. And patients with a low to intermediate syntax score do fairly well with PCI um, as compared to the patients with the higher burden of coronary disease with syntax score of over 32 in which bypass surgery may be recommended. Thank you.